Hey everyone and welcome back to KB Decor Crafts. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this little wooden tree farm that I got inspiration from from a set that I saw at Lowe's. I wish I could say this was all made from the Dollar Tree, but I had to use some different supplies from different stores to make each individual tree. I also want to apologize for my voice right now. I'm fighting a cold that's been going back and forth in my house and I just want to get these videos out for you guys, but let's go ahead and get started. Now I pre-cut a couple pieces already just testing this out to see if it would even work. I use the canvas frames that come underneath the canvases. Uh, I just removed the top portion of the canvas. It's really easy. You could either um, use a flathead screwdriver to remove the staples or with an X-Acto knife cut around it and simply just take the stretch canvas off. Now like I said, I already cut out my top piece and the bottom piece, so I'm going to create the second layer that will go underneath the top. Now I used a ruler, not so much for the measurements, but just to make sure I had two straight lines across. I then used my handsaw to cut the pieces of wood out and make sure that they were nice and even. And make sure you sand the bottoms of the triangles to make sure they're nice and smooth. I did make sure to use all four of the angles out of this frame. Um, for the next size, I needed a larger one, so I just opened up another canvas and measured that out and did the same steps by cutting it out. Now for here, I wanted to make sure that this one was going to align with the very bottom piece because I was going to have that one sit right underneath it. Um, so that's what you'll see me doing here. Now I found this steak uh, over at Walmart. I believe it was no more than a dollar, but I needed to use the actual steak and I kept the sign for my decor later on. Um, but I went ahead and just removed the part that was um, attached to the actual sign with my saw. Then using two different color greens, one dark and one lighter, uh, I painted every other one of my triangles, one dark and one light. Now this by no means has to be perfect um, because we are going to be sanding them down as much as possible. We're just getting the base coat of the color onto the triangles. So using a sanding sponge or a piece of sandpaper, just go ahead and sand them down as much as possible trying to get that wood to be exposed. I did switch off to a more coarse piece of sandpaper to really get that wood exposed. With a dark brown acrylic paint, I went ahead and painted the entire stake to use as my stem. I realized that the stake was too long and I also wanted to cut off the part of that would stick into the ground, the pointy part, so I sawed that piece off. And don't forget to coat the back side as well. And don't forget that this doesn't have to be uh, even or perfect because we're going to be sanding it down as well. Now using any type of sanding block or sandpaper, go ahead and sand it down. Trying to get the same type of wood exposure. Uh, here you'll just get more of the white that's underneath exposed, but just giving it that rustic look is perfect. I use Gorilla Wood Glue to glue on my pieces to the stem, starting with the top triangle. I spread on the glue to make sure it was evenly coated, and then I held it down, holding it in place for a good couple minutes just to make sure it wasn't going to keep falling off. Now you'll want to spread out your branches to see how you want to end up gluing them on. 
um, I did just give a little bit of a space in between each one and then I just glued them on with the wood glue and I also had to add a dab of hot glue just to help the gluing process go quicker. Also, setting down heavy objects on top does help. Now here's where you'll see me adding on some hot glue. Um, I did have a bit of a trouble in the beginning, like I said, trying to get these to stay or, I mean, the wood glue does take a while to actually dry, so <laughs> that was my issue, but with the hot glue, it did help. Now with the last piece, you want to make sure it's going to fit in directly underneath that last triangle. Now for the bottom of my tree, I used the stem cutouts that I got at Hobby Lobby in a pack, no more than $3. I traced around the stem of my tree to see where I needed to cut a hole. I wish I could have shown you how this was done, but my husband had to step in to help me because I was having a really hard time cutting the shape out. This is the only tree that we actually ended up cutting a hole out for um, because it was a little heavier than the other two, but I just used some wood glue to make sure it was going to stay, rubbed it around inside, and just stuck the actual stem inside and held it in place. And that's it for tree number one. For my second tree, I made this one completely from scratch. I used the back of a Dollar Tree sign to try to create the stem um, that I needed. I needed this one to be a little shorter than the other tree, so this was going to be the perfect length I needed. And then I just cut that out with an X-Acto knife. I quickly learned that the X-Acto knife wasn't going to be enough to cut all the way through, so I used my handsaw to continue to cut and get my piece out. You want to sand down any of the jagged edges from cutting to make sure it's nice and smooth. Using the same brown from earlier, go ahead and coat that evenly. I'm going to be using this medium sized popsicle sticks that I found at Dollar Tree in the crafter section. Um, you want to go ahead and take out the ones that are no good. You're going to need a couple of them. I also used the jumbo popsicle sticks from Walmart and we're going to use two different sizes. You can get a few shapes out of just one of the jumbo popsicle sticks. So I started off by creating the top of my tree, which was just a triangle. And I didn't do any exact measurements, I just used a ruler more so for creating straight lines. Now I wanted this tree to be as wonky or a kind of as crooked as possible. Um, I didn't want each branch to be, you know, the same size or same shape so you'll see me going back and forth with shapes and sizes. The best part about these popsicle sticks is that they're easy to cut with just a pair of scissors. Now you do want to make sure to sand down any jagged edges especially where you've cut. Now using that same popsicle stick where I've already cut, I'm going to create a rhombus shape, I believe it's called. It's been a while, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm just going to create kind of the third branch to this tree. Like I said, I'm going to be skipping every other one with a bigger size and then going back in between with the medium popsicle sticks to create like a smaller branch in between. Now from here you'll just see me creating more of those rhombus shape um, out of the bigger popsicle sticks and then going back in between like I said with the medium ones. Now for those I just cut off the ends and then measured out how long I wanted them to be. Using the apple barrel acrylic paint and Christmas green I painted every other one of the popsicle sticks in the dark green color. Make sure you paint the backs as well. I'm using brown paint to paint the medium sized popsicles. And then with the white chalk paint, I'm gonna brush over lightly over each branch.
And now this doesn't have to be a perfect coat because we're going to be sanding this down in the next step. And now with a piece of coarse sandpaper, you want to go ahead and start sanding every piece down to get the wood exposed. What I like about painting the white over the brown is that you'll get a different effect rather than just getting that wood exposure. So we're going to do the same thing with the stem for this tree. Go ahead and sand it as much as possible, just toning down that brown and then I went ahead and added some of that white chalk paint to do the same thing as I did with my brown branches. Then go ahead and repeat the same steps and sand it down as much as possible. The goal here is just to make it look distressed and weathered, um, so there's really no perfect way to do this. Really, the more distressed, the better it looks, in my opinion. I wasn't really satisfied with how it looked so far, so I went ahead and added another layer of the brown paint and then sanded that down. And now using wood glue, we're going to go ahead and put our pieces together to form our tree. For the white and brown pieces, I made sure that when I was gluing them on that they would be a little slanted or crooked um, for every other one just to give it a different type of feel to the tree. Now if it's best for you, go ahead and layer everything down so you know how you're going to glue it down. That way it makes it easier. Um, the only ones I made sure were still straight were the green ones. Those I left straightened out and then the white ones I just left slanted. Then just give them time to thoroughly dry. I wanted to give all my trees the same base, so I used the wood stem again. This time I didn't have to cut in um, like a mark for the stem. All I did was just use the wood glue. I made sure to apply a good amount to hold it still, and it stayed on pretty well. And that's it for tree number two. Now moving on to tree number three, this was the easiest one to do because it was already put together. This was actually an ornament that I found at Walmart that I just decided to repaint. And now here you'll see I'm trying to repaint over what's already there but it didn't quite work out that well so I had to sand this down as much as I could to get that gloss off and then it kind of took the paint um, better than it did before. I did have to give this a good several coatings. Um, I painted every other branch, if you will, a uh, different color green, and then I went and painted the stem and the star brown, and then adding that white chalk effect over the brown and then over the branches as well. Then once that was dry, I used my sanding sponge to sand over everything, trying not to expose what was underneath, but just enough to get it distressed. I eventually added white chalk paint on everything, just to give it a more weathered look. I wanted to keep all of my trays coherent, so I just snapped off the base of this tray, then sanded it down, and then using the same wood piles, I looked for the smallest one after measuring out different sizes, and then I just used the wood glue to glue that on. And this one was pretty easy to glue on as well. You just have to be patient and make sure you put on enough glue and just hold it in place until you think it's thoroughly dry. And here's my little tree farm. I love how these came out. I love how different they are from each other and that I was able to use different objects, different pieces of craft supplies that I had laying around to come up with three different styles. 
I would love to hear from you guys and I would love to know if you've already decorated for Christmas or if you haven't even gotten started yet. I'm almost done, but I have a few more pieces that I need to find places for yet. But thank you guys so much for watching and for always being so supportive. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.